This is one social security video I'll never do. My man Barry writes in, um, he'll be 61 this summer, he's not in the best of health. He's either going to retire this year or next. His breaking even point at, for taking social security at 62 is about 78 or 79. Uh, okay, he says, uh, my question is with a possible reduction in all social security benefits in just over a decade, can you do a video projecting of factoring a hypothetical 20% reduction in benefits beginning in 2034? No. I told him I will not do that. I will not do that because it's silly. It's silly, silly, silly on his face. Well, this is a Sabbath video, by the way. It is Sunday. So any money I make off this revenue from, uh, ad, from ad revenue, I will donate to a, a pregnancy center. The, uh, the Hill Country Pregnancy Center is what will receive the, the bulk of our donations because we got to protect the babies, the unborn babies. And we need these 4D technologies, man. You can't be having an abortion when you see a 4D baby in your womb. Um, I mean, you can be. You shouldn't be. And, uh, and we should protect that at all costs. And if that bothers you, I'm not the channel for you, baby. I don't believe in abortion. I don't think it should be legal. I think it should be avoided. And I think people who commit abortions, not the 18-year-old the young lady who uh, was taken advantage of by some clown, uh, the doctor who does it, uh, they, should, they should face consequences uh, for, for the elimination of an unborn baby, 100%. I got no qualm of saying that at all. You don't have to watch me. You can, you know, don't watch the video, and we won't receive any money for this video. But be does it, man. All right. The irony of it all. <laughs> I'm going to lunch with somebody, a dinner here in a few minutes, in about, in about two hours, with someone who's near and dear to my heart, who, uh, thankfully, the woman uh, who... Uh, was just a teen had given birth to her because abortion was was not rare and safe and rare as Bill Clinton said it was unattainable where this person gave the birth um, and as such this lady is born and uh, made the lives of her parents her true mom and dad not biological mom and dad but the true mom and dad happy because they couldn't have babies and uh, <laughs> I start crying thinking about it because what a wonderful story all right so anyway so Barry uh <laughs> so I'm not going to do something like this Barry and I emailed Barry back and he got it but um because it's silly the idea that we're gonna have a 20% reduction I I, I kind of go back to this whole thing like Rick Edelman we need a plan to where live to 120 it's just it's so freaking stupid there's no evidence of this at all I just, I, it boggles my mind. Well, more people are living to 100 now than they did, you know, 50 years ago. Yes, because there's more people. Well, that proves that Rick Edelman's right. No, it doesn't. Why are there more people? Because there's less infant mortality. I just, why can't people get this? It's insane to me, man. The actual data for us living longer isn't nearly to the extent that Rick Edelman and the other people would say we're living to 100, 120. It's just not there. It's not. In fact, after you throw in the pandemic, it's even, it's going backwards. Stupid. Now, I do think Noah lived, what, like 765 years old, 100%. Well, back then, we used to have 10-month calendars and stuff before the uh, the new calendar got corrupt. Anyway, and I also think that people lived longer back then. Probably they weren't eating as much chemicals. Uh, you know, they're outside doing physical labor and things of that nature. Uh, so I do believe we have the ability as human beings to live long, uh, with 100%. But this, not now. Processed food, all the crap we're putting in our bodies from child bear bearing from the beginning with all the various jabby jabbies they're putting in plus all the processed food the chemicals that they're you know the chemtrails are dropping in the sky all this stuff it's all bad it's all anti-human i mean the evil one runs this show and uh we were just along for the ride and uh and i tell you man this thing right here i'm recording this video on ugh, probably the biggest source of evil there is just to take away from the good true and the beautiful anyway so Barry says, but Josh, they could reduce my Social Security by 20%. I'm like, all right, well, you could also live to 120. Um, what's the evidence of that? There isn't any. I mean, there isn't any. We have more people alive today because we have less child uh, mortality because people learn how to do what? Oh, wash their hands. And, uh, and doctors in Vienna were told by Ignaz Semmelweis, hey, instead of going over this lady in your infection and going to infect this lady and infect this, infect this lady, which destroys their children and kills the moms, why don't you wash your hands before you deliver another baby? You ever thought about that? Which always kind of flies into my whole thing, the germ versus terrain theory. A lot of conspiracy theorists, which I'm one of, doubt the uh, germ theory. And I'm like, yeah, but how do you explain Ignaz Semmelweis then? I, I don't know. I mean, if something was on these doctors' hands, 
that uh, that populated into the, the newborn women, the women who are given newborns, births where they, the babies died, and they died too because of disease. So I don't know how you make that claim. I, I don't know. I haven't really dived that deep into it. But there is, you know, a conspiracy about uh, germ versus uh, terrain theory. And I'm, I'm not quite sure I fall into the uh, anti-germ theory, but I'm, I'm open for that out there right now because if you trust anything that's coming out of the pike now, I don't know what to tell you, man. It's all fake, all of it. And, uh, and you got to be skeptical on everything that comes down. You don't have to live your life as a cynic, but you have to live your life as a skeptic 100%. That's what I was telling my daughter as we are driving down here to Houston. I said, man, you got to be skeptical on everything. doesn't mean you have to be cynic, just being skeptical. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. She does. She's right back at me. She goes, Dad, I'll tell her something. She goes, yeah, I'm not sure I believe you. I said, okay. <laughs> it's not good. Anyway, so, all right, then we got Rick Edelman. Who else we got? We got... Um, People saying, oh, Social Security, oh, Roth conversions. Well, I guess Rick Edelman does this too, right? Is it him or somebody else talks about Roth conversions? That uh, they're going to get rid of Roth conversions and, uh, you know, Roth tax-free. They're going to tax your Roth. I mean, it's just, I think it's Rick Edelman said the same thing. It's stupid. There is no proposed legislation for that. I mean, when I say proposed legislation, any freaking run-the-mill congressman can say 2 plus 2 is 5. I'm proposing that. Okay. It, it's not going anywhere, dude. I mean, come on. <laughs> so... This idea that we're going to have, we can plan that we're going to get rid of Roth conversions or make Roth taxable. Well, I just don't know why you would do that. We can plan that you're going to live to 120. Why would you do that? Where is the evidence? So then we go back to we're going to plan that they're going to reduce Social Security by 20%. All right. When has a government ever taken money away from taxpayers, from voters? The answer is not. Do you really think, do you really think? They're going to take away your Social Security benefits? Are you freaking insane? Come on, man. They're not just, oh, my goodness. They're not going to take away your benefit. Why? Because they're going to wait till just like they did in 1983. And I can't remember if 1993 they're up against it. But 1983, they're up against it. Well, they, Reagan signed the first taxation of Social Security. 50% of your benefits was subject to taxation. And we had bend points that haven't, uh, not the bend points, but we had uh, provisional income rules that haven't changed since, where you pay taxes on your Social Security benefits. And again, the vast majority of people did not pay any tax on Social Security benefits back then because they didn't adjust it for inflation. Now fast forward to, was that 50, you know, 40 years later, and we're still using the same provisional income rules. So more and more of us pay taxes on Social Security. And you could say that's a reduction. Well, if you do planning right, like I teach in this freaking YouTube channel, you don't have to pay taxes on Social Security if you do it right, if you know how provisional incomes works. But, Josh, they're just going to tax your Roth anyway, and you're going to be living to 120, and you're going to need long-term care. Oh, my goodness, no one week can retire. They're going to do Social Security. We all need long-term care. It costs $500,000. We're all going to live to 120, and they're going to tax our Roth, so they're going to tax our Social Security. It's like... Politicians don't win. Look, and I, I get it. I mean, we're, we're selected, not elected. I get that. You still have to have some, some semblance of legitimacy in your, uh, in your rulers, if that makes sense. They can't, just, they can't go freaking Joseph Stalin, and everybody knows that, you know, it's, or freaking, what's the dude's name in North Korea? There has to be some semblance of democratically elected representation, if that makes sense. Um, oh, the Republican. Okay, you know what the hell I'm saying. There has to be some semblance of legitimacy or else the whole thing falls. And if the whole thing falls, guess who falls the most? It's the people on the high end. The Joe Bidens, the Lindsey Grahams, all these clowns, dude, all these scumbags. They want the legitimacy so that way they don't fall because they're so far up above you and I that if, they, if the thing falls, they're falling the worst. You see what I'm saying? They don't want that to happen. So they're going to do whatever they can to keep the rabble-rousers at bay, the pitchforks set, set aside. How? They're not going to do it by taking your Social Security. Now, if we come to you know, 2032 and all of a sudden it's like we're reducing Social Security, I'm now a dictator. We'll get, uh, you know, uh, let's see, who would be the second coming of Obama will come in and say, I'm, I don't know, freaking Gavin Newsom, whatever. Yeah, he won't because he's, well, just say Gavin Newsom. He comes in and says, Keith Ellison, there you go, Keith Ellison from Minnesota. He's a clown, but we'll just use him, Attorney General of Minnesota, a big NOI guy. And he comes in and he says, I'm ruler forever, you know, and uh, I dictate you're going to lose 20% of your Social Security. Okay, they don't have to make adjustments accordingly. It's not on the table right now. 1983, they scrambled at the last minute, and they taxed Social Security, they raised, uh, you know, in terms of 50% of your Social Security benefits was subject to taxation as long as your provisional income was above this threshold. And the provisional income thresholds was way higher than the vast majority of people ever had. So the vast majority of people then had no taxes on Social Security. Fast forward 40 years, 
They haven't raised the uh, payroll tax at all since 1993. Uh, we have more and more people receiving benefits on Social Security. The COLAs of Social Security are higher than, uh, you know, last year was like 8.7 or something like that. You see what I'm saying? And they have less people in the workplace. And inherently, they're going to have to raise the payroll tax. They're going to have to raise the payroll tax. No other way around that. And again, as I always say, they should increase the taxation on people who make over a million bucks. Uh, they should say, you don't get long-term capital gains, you don't get qualified dividends. And put that money solely to use in Social Security. And I would actually put a net worth tax on the billionaires of the world. Say, if you got over a billion bucks, you can afford to lose 0.5% of your net worth every year. No, they can't. They cripple the stock. Okay, well, how does Jeff Bezos fund his freaking elaborate yacht uh, shenanigans? Oh, by selling Amazon stock. Huh, that doesn't hurt the price, does it now? How does freaking, what's his name, Zuck, what's that guy's name, Mark Zuck, or how does he, I don't even know what the hell he does. How does he finance his, he sells his stock? Oh, that doesn't hurt the stock at all now, does it? How does Elon Musk, I mean, come on, man, Elon Musk is fake, we all know that. How does he finance his insanity? He sells stock. It doesn't hurt the stock price at all. So to add another 0.5% of them have to sell a stock to provide more Social Security funding, it's not going to hurt the share price. <laughs> Silly. Well, but they'll start there, and then they'll come after us middle-class people. <sighs> you take the freaking W's we can get them. <sighs> you cross those bridges when they come. Right now, Social Security isn't there. No one is going to allow Social Security. Did not, does anyone not know what happened in 1984 with Walter Mondo? He said, Reagan will raise your taxes, but he won't tell you. I will also raise your taxes, but I'm telling you right now. He said that in the convention. Where was that convention? Mondale did it. And he lost every single state. And he almost lost his own state of Minnesota by 5,000 votes. Because he said, I'm going to tax middle class people. And people said, ah, yeah, no, thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a politician. We're going to take away 20% of your Social Security. Yeah, you guess what's going to happen? You ain't getting any far. You're not getting it. So I'll never do a video on this. So don't ask. It's not happening. But I mean, I appreciate what's that guy's name. Barry asking. I'm just not going to do it. All right. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.